Fuel storage facilities contain a number of potential hazards. That is why workplace safety is a major concern. Everyone working in and around the storage facility must understand and follow specific safety procedures. That means you are responsible for working in a safe and professional manner. This is not only important for individual safety, but as for the safety of coworkers and for the equipment in the facility as well. You must know the hazards, how to prevent incidents, and what to do in an emergency. Step one is to learn and follow the operating procedures at your facility. This will help to identify and answer any problems before they take place. This is especially important when transferring and handling fuels. It's also important to know that new and old tank farms have safety devices built into the system. Tanks are equipped with overfill protection and warning devices to let operators know that there is a safety hazard approaching. Become familiar with the warning alarms and proper steps to take should alarm sound. Emergency shutoff devices are located around the retail dispenser. These bright red electrical switches should be actuated and inspected monthly to ensure that the system can be shut down in case of emergency. Knowing what's in a tank and how much it can hold will help prevent spills. For that reason, it's important to label each tank with large, bold letters indicating the contents and maximum storage capacity in gallons. This tells the operator which product they are working with and helps identify proper tanks. Speaking of storage tanks, do not go inside a tank for any reason. Work done inside a tank must be performed by properly trained personnel certified to work in confined spaces. Proper equipment and procedures are also required. Another important safety precaution is to monitor people in the facility. Do not permit unauthorized people inside the tank farm since they have not been trained to follow proper safety measures. Also, maintain communication with your coworkers in the facility and with local emergency service personnel. Since we are working around petroleum products, the primary hazards we must be concerned with are fire and explosion. For that reason, smoking in open flames are not allowed anywhere on the facility. Also, be careful of the tools you use. Items such as electrical saws, drills, grinders, battery output hand tools, cameras, CB radios, or cell phones can cause sparks that could trigger a fire or explosion. Keep in mind too that static electricity from clothing and equipment can also cause a spark so take precautions. Throughout the facility we'll notice several areas where specific safety equipment is stored in order to provide rapid access in times of emergency. This equipment includes first aid kits and portable fire extinguishers. Know the location of this equipment and how to use it. Fire extinguishers should be ABC multi-purpose dry chemical type. Keep them pressurized and in good working condition. Good fire prevention policies also include keeping the work area free of non-essential flammable items and materials such as empty gas cans, jerry jugs, rags, and other items that can start or spread fires at the facility. Following safe work practice also means wearing your personal protective equipment or PPE. Hard hats are essential in all areas where the potential exists for being struck by an overhead object. Always wear proper clothing inside a tank farm. Do not wear wools, fleeces, or animal furs. As we mentioned before, these items have the tendency to create static electricity. Safety glasses with side shields must be worn in all work areas or any time dust or flying debris are present. If you have prescription eyewear, it must meet safety standards and be equipped with side shields. If not, then standard goggles or safety glasses must be worn over them. On some jobs such as grinding, additional eye protection may be required in the form of goggles or face shields. Those working nearby must also wear the added protection. Steel toe boots are also required. Keep them in good shape and be certain there is no steel exposed that could cause a static electrical spark. Hand protection is necessary for several jobs around the facility such as working on certain system components and handling fuel or harmful substances that could be absorbed by the skin. Proper gloves are also necessary to protect you from chemical and thermal burns. When handled and stored properly, the petroleum products and chemicals we work with prevent very little danger. That is why it's critical that all chemicals and substances be clearly identified, labeled correctly, and accompanied by an improved material safety data sheet, or MSDS. This documentation details the composition of substances, its potential dangers, effects on the body if not handled correctly, emergency treatment actions, who manufactured the material, and other important data. If you are working in an area where hazardous materials are stored and used, review the appropriate MSDS. Maintaining a safe workplace involves keeping your work area clean. Take waste with you and dispose of them according to the specific rules for waste handling and management. And prevent trips, slips and falls by cleaning up spills, picking up debris, and keeping stairs and walkways clear of snow and ice. Before we close our discussion of safety, let's review some first aid points. In the event of an accident, quick response can save lives and prevent serious injuries. For that reason, it is a good idea for storage tank operators to have basic first aid training. 
That includes knowing the four basic first aid response techniques for fuel-related incidents. For fuel vapor inhalation, move up wind to fresh air and seek medical attention. For skin contact with fuel, remove affected clothing and wash the skin. For eye contact with fuel, flush eyes with water for 15 minutes and seek medical attention. And for ingestion of fuel, do not induce vomiting and again, seek medical attention. If one of these other chemical related incidents takes place, refer to the appropriate material safety data sheet for how to best treat the affected person. As we said at the beginning of this presentation, workplace safety is everyone's responsibility. By following approved work procedures, wearing personal protective equipment and knowing what to do in an emergency, you will help ensure that your fuel tank facility will be a safe place in which to work.